For the last couple of weeks, I've been traveling through this landscape, the Lofoten Islands in the Arctic part of Norway. I'm traveling with my car, which also functions as my full-time home. And in the back of this, I have all the gear I need to be able to live this life. And as a photographer, I always have my cameras with me, no matter where I go. A lot of people ask what's the best camera for this or what's the best camera for that. But honestly, the best camera you will ever have is the one that you actually bring with you. I actually look at all my gear as a tool, which is just supposed to work no matter what kind of environment or abuse I put it through. And for that very same reason, I like to keep the setup that I use to create these films and take all of my photography quite simple. Up until quite recently, I've been using the Olympus EM1 as my main and only camera. And apart from being a very light setup, it's also dust and waterproof which fits perfect for the way that I live. And some while back, Olympus changed the name to OM Systems. So then I replaced my former camera with the OM5, which is now my main camera. And this setup is even lighter, which means that this is now retired to just being a backup camera. And everything I create is made with these three lenses, as well as the one that you're watching through. And the cameras that I'm using are better known as Micro Four Thirds, which means that instead of being a full frame camera, you are shooting with a smaller format, which means that if I'm talking about an eight millimeter lens that's equivalent to being a 16 millimeter lens if we were talking about full frame cameras and honestly i probably shoot 80 percent with that lens right there it's a 12 to 40 millimeter lens which means it's very versatile and it's also super light and waterproof so i can use it for basically everything if i'm bringing like just one lens and i also have these two lenses which is a bit more odd so they're more specific to do one certain job skiing or oh Those reflexes though. This is a 8 to 25 millimeter lens, which actually makes it quite versatile as well. But I'm using this for everything I need to be wide. For example, filming inside a car, inside a tent, or filming a biker or a skier moving fast past you. The lens you're watching through ends at 40 millimeters, whilst this continues from 40 all the way up to 150, which makes it possible to use it for filming everything which is very far away, like birds or filming a mountain ridge quite far away but I'll still be able to switch back to 40 if there is something coming up a bit more close. For example, if you're filming a bird and all of a sudden there is a great composition of a guy next to you, you can kind of switch between those different scenarios. I also have this one lens, which is not from Olympus, and it's quite remarkable because it has a f-stop all the way down to 0.95. So it's more of a fun lens to use for quite artsy, film clips but it's not really something that i use for photos because it's quite buttery and when we are talking about f-stops the easiest way for me to describe this without going into too much detail would be how much light you will be able to pull through the lens and the easiest way to kind of visually understand this is how big of an opening you will have at the back of the lens so here you will have a lens with f 4.0 which means it's perfectly fine during the day but during night you will obviously have a lot more problems to get enough light through the lens and here you have the lens which is 0.95 which means you will be able to film when it's actually completely dark outside but it's not only affecting lighting it's also affecting where you will have focus so if you are at 0.95 you will only have focus between this range right here but if you are up to f.4 for example you will have focus in this range and if you are boosting it all the way up to f11 for example you will have focus all the way from here to there if that makes sense you can learn how to use a camera through an actual education but personally i've learned everything i know through youtube and going out and actually using my gear and the same thing kind of goes for most things in my life because if you fake it till you make it you will eventually figure out how things work and the same goes for the car, because if you look at a car as something completely untouchable and you can't really grasp your head around it, you will probably never figure out how to even change your own brakes. And as well as figuring out how to use my cameras for YouTube, I kind of did the same for the car. As well as joining a bunch of different Facebook groups and getting a lot of help from nice people whenever there's a problem that occurs. I know I have said this before, but a friend of my dad once told him, and he later on told me that if it's put together by humans, you will probably be able to take it apart and put it back together yourself. 
And you kind of have to force yourself into doing something that you're not really comfortable with, but that is a very great way of actually learning a new skill. And speaking of new skills, the whole video thing is quite new to me. I'm obviously very familiar with photos, but last autumn I started making videos as well. And my learning curve is very public. And I also want to create these videos while I'm traveling because that's the only way it's actually sustainable. So I'm kind of forced to have this simple setup that just works. So I'm editing everything on my small MacBook Pro. I have a couple of external hard drives and I'm using a camera setup, which is very light and weatherproof. For power, I'm using a very small power bank from River, which was perfectly adequate when I was only editing photos. But as I've moved into videos as well, this is not sufficient at all. And that power bank is actually just being charged by the 12 volts inside the car right now, because I used to have a hundred watts of solar on the roof, but I needed more storage up there but it's being replaced with a 100 watt solar panel for the hood of the car instead. And in addition to that, I also need to invest and upgrade into a huge battery pack that makes it possible to actually sit full days and edit without thinking about the power consumption. When it comes to the process of putting these videos together, I usually film everything within a couple of hours and I try to edit everything within the double of that. When I get back to the car, I transfer everything from the camera to a hard drive, which makes it possible to edit wherever I find it suitable. For example, in the back of the car, at a cafe, or wherever I might find a power outlet. And I'm also a strong believer in sound, because even my Instagram and TikTok videos are filmed with a wireless road mic, because I really hate it when you can't really hear the voice of a guy, or he has to shout to the camera, or whisper when he's closer. And all of my music and sound effects are pulled off the royalty-free page Epidemic Sounds, which makes it possible for this one-man crew to create these videos quite fast. And I also prefer when all of the shots are filmed with the same camera, because then everything looks quite similar. And instead of filming action shots on the GoPro and having footage kind of mismatch, everything I film with a camera mounted outside of the car is done with the suction mount right here and the main camera. And the in-body stabilization in the cameras that I use is quite remarkable, because shots like this is straight out of the camera with only color grading and no gimbal at all. In fact, it's actually mounted on this at the back of a Volkswagen from the 80s. Right now it's 4.30. I'm going to finish off this meal, which is basically some fried veggies and some naan, as well as some chili aioli. And after that, I'm going to patch up this video and I'll go to sleep and most likely wake up closing in on sunset again at this spot. See you in the next one.